Hi everyone, Steven here with Big Fish Audio, and this is the full walkthrough of Momentum. Now, we do have a shorter quick start video, so if you don't have a lot of time and just want to find out the basics of this software, I recommend checking that out first, then come back to get a more detailed look at the full set of features of this software. So, what is Momentum? Momentum is a free but very powerful loop transformation platform that will allow you to add effects to individual slices of a loop or rearrange a loop quickly and efficiently. You can also rearrange multiple loops together and fully mix them within the plugin. Momentum is based on the foundation that we started with our KLI series, which utilized only a small amount of the features we've included and was only available in the contact engine. Momentum has taken the concept of our KLI series and we've elevated it to a level we couldn't achieve with the KLI format. Okay, so after you've downloaded and installed Momentum onto your computer, go ahead and launch your DAW and create a software instrument track. From there, you can find Momentum located under the Big Fish Audio heading. Here in Logic, it's right here. The very first time you launch Momentum, you'll need your Big Fish Audio account credentials. If you don't have an account with Big Fish Audio, you can create one for free right there on the spot. It'll only take a few seconds. After that, only on rare occasions will you need to re-enter your login info. Like for example, if you purchase something from the store, it'll ask you for your login info again. Okay, before we get into all the nitty gritty of what Momentum can do, let's get a quick overview of the different pages and sections, and then we'll come back around and look at all the detail of what everything is. When you first launch the plugin, you'll be here on the Mixer page. And this is where you can begin by adding your own samples from the computer, simply by dragging and dropping into the drop section here. Or you can add a kit from the My File section of any products you already have in your account by dragging a kit in or double clicking. Now let's look over at the Slice page. The Slice page is really where you're going to find the most creative and powerful tools in Momentum. You can add an effect to any individual slice in a loop or sample. This opens up an endless possibility of sound shaping ideas that you could come up with. You can also edit the slice points here. You can delete them, move them around, or add slices by a grid. And then down here at the bottom, this is where you'll select which effect you want to be processing on the loop or sample, turn it on, and then from there you can make your edits. On the left side of the plugin is the browser. I'm going to click on the store where I can view all available products, specifically formatted for Momentum. You'll find everything from pop, rock, hip hop, jazz, uh, cinematic, so many different styles of products that are already available in Momentum, and that's an ever-growing collection. I can click on a demo here, listen to Modern Funk. You can also click in a product, look at all available kits in that product, and then also listen to demos of each kit as well. Over on the My Files section, these are all products that I already have in my account. And then the Custom tab at the top is where uh, any kit that you have saved in the past will show up, if you want to recall that at a later time. Okay, let's go back to the mixer, and now we'll really dive in into more detail. So I'm going to clear out these two loops that I already have in here. And click the disk icon up here and hit Clear. It's going to ask me, are you sure? I am sure. And now we're uh, in my files here. Let's click on a product, Atmos, and uh, load up this kit for. I can drag it in or double click it, and it will load right in. So I'll also show you how to add your own samples in a minute, but let's start by looking at the keyboard layout at the bottom and also how that relates to these channels that were just created and the groups and samples section here. So you notice that there are these different blue sections of notes. Each blue note is a different loop on there. So if I play uh, from this first group of blue notes, you can see drums dry, channel one is being played. And then you can also see here that drums dry, and this is drums dry F. So if I play a different one, there's drums dry E, and the next section up is gonna be drums affected. Now I'm not clicked on the drums affected group here, but you can still see at the bottom, it's playing 04 drums affected D here. But I can click over here and see all the loops that are included in affected. And the next section are all the bass parts. The next section is guitar chords one. Now in this particular kit, we've chosen to use letters to name the different sections of the song. So this is currently section E. If I find E, uh, actually let's use F these parts will go together. That's not to say that a different lettered section would also work, but you'll just know for sure that the different lettered sections will work together. On In some kits, you might see something like chorus one or verse one. In this particular one, we're just using letters to keep everything organized. 
Now, the section below that on the keyboard is that pink section with the yellow note in the middle. The yellow note in the middle is B, and you can see also up here at the top, it's saying that the uh, kit that we loaded in is in the key of B. That's the root note of the kit. I can change that on the fly using the keyboard section though. So if I wanna go up to C sharp, Now, if I'm playing a drum part as well, you'll notice as I change keys on there that the drum part doesn't change. You'll find that across the board for any momentum library, non-melodic elements won't pitch with the pitch section of the keyboard. However, there are tune knobs available for every channel. So if I wanted to tune this, I could do that right here. Okay, let's go ahead and load in a couple samples from our computer. So here is a shaker sample and a synth. And you'll notice as I drop that in that a new channel for each sample will appear and also two new keys on the keyboard. Let's bring back Logic. And let's play these. So there's a synth, which you notice is it's in a different color. And uh, the reason is, is there's no metadata on that. It's a loop I recorded earlier and momentum basically needs to be told uh, what key it is and also what type of playback I want. So it's currently set to shot, which is a one shot. But when I set it to loop, you can see here that went from the question marks to 85 BPM. And then I need to put in the original key of this, which is C, not B. So you don't want to put in the key of the kit that I'm working in, but the original key of the loop so that it will all lock into whatever I currently have set. So I'll go ahead and put that back on B. And now that synth loop is now in the right key. If I play that with a part here, it now matches up. They're both synced up to the host BPM. Bring in the shaker. Okay, let's look at the rest of the items in the channels. You obviously have things like solo and mute for each channel, volume control, pan and tune knobs. We also have multi-output per channel. So if you want to set the first channel to the first stereo outputs, one and two, you just leave it on master, and then we'll set the next one to output two, stereo output three. Now I'm not gonna go into each DAW and how you set up multi-outputs, but you just know that you do have the option in Momentum to set up multi-outputs to route to your DAW. Okay, let's talk about adding effects. As you saw earlier on the slice page, they have their own set of effects that you add individually slice by slice. Here on the mixer page, this is a more traditional set of effects. You turn it on, it covers the whole sound, the whole sample. To add effects here, you simply click on the channel you want to have affected. So right now we have synth pad C, and you can see down here it says effects synth pad C. Let's click over to drums dry, and now I'll be adding effects to anything in the drums dry channel. So if I play this, and we click over to the phaser, and then we're gonna turn it on, turn up the mix on the phaser, and then you can adjust the rate and depth and other parameters that are included on this. If you're looking for something different, click on the three dots. You can see all available effects. So let's click distortion here. And then I'm just going to turn it down as we add uh, some drive to this. Let's try tube. Back off the drive a little bit, a little low cut and then you can adjust how much of that signal you want to come through with the mix knob. If you want to adjust the distortion, put to 100%. Another way to add effects is the sends. So if we click this, you saw this window here changed over to the send effects. Now you can think of these six send effects as six different aux tracks with an effects built into them. And then you have your six buses or sends that you can route over to those effects. So for this delay, turn this up. Let's click tempo sync on it and then move this over to an eighth note. Back off how much signal we're sending to it. Also keep in mind, these send effects are universal for all the channels. So if you make a change to the time and the delay and then you click over to the shakers the sends window will look the same so these are all unique to the channel and these are universal for all the channels okay so the last few things we'll look at on the mixer page is the latch and input cue 
Currently, if I press a loop, I have to hold it down for it to continue to play back. If I hit latch, I can press and release the key and it will continue to play back until either I hit that note again or go from one loop to another in the same group, at which point it will start the next loop. The input cue allows you to trigger a loop on the exact beat division you want from your DAW. So if I click the drop down here, you can see I can select anywhere from an eighth note, quarter note, all the way up to a bar line. So if I click that here, you do need to have your playhead running either by hitting the play button or record. And now I can press a loop now and it won't trigger until the bar line. Okay, let's now go over to the slice page. Now that we're on the slice page, the first thing that you should notice is the keyboard layout has changed. So now any loop that I currently select, I have access to play that loop from any point. So I can rearrange it on the fly, create a new part out of it entirely. Now, if I click back over to the mixer, you see the layout reverts back. On the bottom right hand corner though, it does allow you to lock in either this particular layout with the kit. So now if I go to slice, it's continued to show uh, this layout here. So you no longer have access to play uh, a loop back, record a loop part into your DAW using uh, the slice view. But this is useful if you're uh, adding slice effects and the whole goal is I'm gonna play them back from the beginning. I'm not editing the way that they play back in terms of the order of the slices. But you want to, in context with another loop or multiple loops, hear what it sounds like as you add the slice effects. Then the other option is to lock in the slice view. So even if you're on the mixer page, you can uh, then play a part back and then add, say, a group effect uh, to this loop, but then still have the ability to play it from any point in the loop. We'll go back to auto for now, go back to the slice page, and then let's go ahead now and add some effects to this particular loop here. So I'm using the uh, drums dry D, and we're gonna make our own affected version of this. So to start, let's go ahead and turn on the vol pan effect here, click on pan, and then let's just do every other. Now I could draw this all the way across, which is uh, time consuming and tedious. It's much better if you have a specific pattern you're looking for, just do whatever that pattern is gonna be. And in this case, it's just down and then up. So it's going uh, right and then left or left and right. And then I'm gonna hit repeat first two slices and that will draw that all the way across the keyboard. Now, if I wanna take this longer sample, this longer slice here and just bring that back to center, I can do that. And then now it sounds like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and now click on the pitch effect here. I'm gonna turn that on and let's do something like, like this. And then we're gonna go ahead, I have uh, six slices here. Each one of these little groups is six slices. So I can go repeat for six. And that's now drawn that across the entirety of this loop. And then next, um, we could add reverse, but uh, so that's kind of cool. But let's change this out for, let's go distortion here. And now we have two options to affect on the slice drive, and mix. I'm going to take a quick pause here in adding the distortion and just show you one quick thing that I should point out. You can see here uh, on the distortion, I am adding uh, from going down all the way up. So however much I am going up in the waveform itself is how much drive I'm adding. Down here at the bottom, that's basically zero drive. Same thing with the mix is I'm adding from the bottom and adding an amount to that. Where the pitch going down from this center line here that we have is gonna obviously lower the pitch, going up from it is going to increase the pitch. So in most cases, uh, the effects look like this. You're adding from zero to something else, but you'll see a couple of variations. Again, like this volume and pan, this line here is basically the zero, it's unchanged in the volume. And then this is increasing volume and this is lowering volume on a particular slice. Okay, let's go back to the distortion now. You can see on this one, I also have additional parameters below it. These are not affected by the slice, but is an overall color adjustment that you can make to whatever uh, particular effect you're working with. So let's add drive uh, to this, and I don't have any mix added to it yet, so you won't hear the effect. 
I could just go over to the mixer page and add the drive from there, but I like the ability to add some movement to the effect by using the slice effects here. And uh, I need to go over to the mix now and turn that up so you can hear the effect. And I'll kind of mirror what I did with the drive, bringing it up and then back down again when I get to that long note. And I'll just decrease the uh, mix and drive amount on the long note a little bit. And then uh, I can, if I want to, overall increase an amount across or whatever pattern I have across all of the samples by using the trim. So I can trim that up or down if I wanted to just make that lighter. And then I can go ahead and do the same thing. Repeat six slices. I'll do the same thing for the mix. Repeat six slices. And then let's actually increase this one just a little bit and then re-edit those to repeat across. And then let's go ahead and add, let's see, uh, what would be cool to add to this now. Um, we could try uh, phaser. Let's go ahead and do a pitch glide now to these long notes here. So this first one, let's make that drop down. And then you can also control the speed of, of that glide as well if you want to go really fast, you could do it like that, or really slow, you could lower it. Let's go ahead and repeat that across all slices, repeat this. Actually, let's try alternating, uh, going down and then going back up. Now, let's go ahead and add some limiting here with this limiter and we could just do this in the group effects but having it on the slices you can really just automate that to give it a little bit more movement and then add some really cool crunch with it as well so yeah that sounds pretty cool we can also change the mode here let's just keep it on soft and then we'll repeat that across the loop and then we'll go ahead and click delay we're going to add some delay just to this note here. And then let's go ahead and repeat that also every six slices. So you can see the pattern is nothing and then adding a bunch. So it's, it will continue to work perfectly across this particular loop. We can make that a ping pong so it kind of hits left and then right pans across and then I can adjust the time of that too I actually like that tempo so if I went lower you see that was really fast and then if I turned up the feedback of that I actually kind of like that I like that change in the time so I'm going to repeat first 12 actually on this so that it repeats that pattern of shorter than longer delay times there. Okay, that's cool. And then let's go ahead and add some reverb to that as well. Now let's click over to time and we'll really increase the length of the reverb quite dramatically. You could hear actually how the time change on that particular parameter uh, it killed the reverb by having this much shorter time here. Anything that has any decay, any parameter that has decay, like the time of a reverb or uh, feedback or time of a delay, that will be continuously um, altered by whatever setting you have. So again, you could hear how if I bring this all the way down, it will absolutely kill that reverb right when it hits to that point. Which is useful. I mean, if you wanted everything to be really long, we could just go ahead and do this and say repeat the first six slices. And then that, that time will basically remain unedited there. But let's go ahead and um, I kind of liked it being killed here. And then we'll repeat that. 
and then we can alter the uh, bring some more high cut onto that some damping Now, just really quickly before we move on, there's two other buttons here on the left. There's random and clear. So randomize will obviously randomize any uh, effect that you're currently looking at. So we have this uh, pitch effect here. Let's go ahead and hit randomize on it. Try it again. And then at the bottom here is clear. Now that's only gonna clear whatever effect and parameter you're currently looking at. So if I was on a delay and I cleared this particular um, parameter here, the send level, it's only gonna clear that the time and the feedback is what I had before. So any changes that you've made here on the slice page with the slice effects, if you go back to the mixer, now that same loop will have all those effects on it from the mixer page. Now, obviously I've taken away, I've cleared some of those effects already. But if you did have a loop that you've made a change to and you wanted to have a new version of it, you can click the loop right from the groups and samples and drag it to your drop uh, sample area here. And now you have a fresh version of the loop if you want to make another edit to it. And then if you decided you didn't want any loop, you can always click the X in the corner and clear it out. So I mentioned earlier in this video that you can edit the slice points on any loop as well. So to do that, we're going to click from Effects to slice, and now I have the ability to move around slice points, add slice points, or delete them. Let's start by clicking over to the synth pad C that I imported earlier, and then if I play this back, you can hear that these slice points are running across held notes, which is not really what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shift click across all of them, hit delete to remove them all. And now I can add by eighth notes if I wanted, or uh, enter them in manually. So I can double click directly on this loop, like this and enter them in. I can also zoom in if I need to by dragging this here to see, uh, get a closer look of what I'm doing on here. And then I can um, fine tune what I'm doing and create these slice points. Just zoom this back out and add one more slice here. So now I can go ahead and use this part, add effects to it, um, or do whatever I like. So let's talk about the speed, playback, and mode section here in the middle. For any loop, you can set it to halftime or double time from its currently set BPM, which is whatever your DAW is set to. So right now it's at 75. Now I like to use these halftime and double time options when I'm currently working with a track and then I bring in a, a loop that's drastically different than the BPM of, of like for example, this loop here in Momentum. So this drum loop here is at 125. Let's go ahead and adjust the host tempo BPM here as an example. And it sounds like that. Now if I have now adjusted from 75 to 125, so it's quite a bit faster now for this part. So if I play that back with those drums, it's gonna sound a little frantic. And forgive me, I am just playing this visually, so if it's not quite locked in with the drums, you'll understand. So if we go ahead and adjust this now to halftime. So you can really hear that that's a much better feel for that particular drum loop and tempo that I currently had set. The playback mode has two options, beat and stretch. When you're in stretch mode, it's gonna stretch the audio in between each slice according to what your host BPM is set to. This ensures that you don't end up having any gaps in between the audio of from slice to slice. So for example, if I reset this to uh, 1x instead of half time or double time, and then we're gonna change our host BPM to something slower than the original BPM of this loop. And now you're gonna hear some gaps when I move this over to beat mode in between the slice points. Now let me put this back on stretch. So it's stretched the audio in between each of the slice points. Now in a lot of cases, you'll actually prefer beat mode depending on the type of audio and loop that you're working with. 
Okay, for the mode options, let's click over to another instance of momentum. And I'm just gonna bring my BPM up a little bit. And this is the loop that we're currently working with now. So let's go ahead and look at the different, different options. Uh, loop is what I've been currently using for all the loops, uh, which of course means once it gets to the end of the loop, it will repeat itself. Now you can adjust the end of the loop points or the beginning uh, by dragging this uh, flag here. And then you can drag that to any point. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. And we're gonna grab uh, this portion of the loop here. And now let's check out some of the other modes. Backwards mode is going to play it in reverse. And it will loop that reverse too. And then boomerang will play it forward and then return uh, the other direction. Now using boomerang mode, I like to add a little delay to it. So we're gonna go ahead and just click on the sends here and bring up the delay. Tempo sync that and I like a dotted eighth on that. It just adds a little bit of connectivity between when the loop is going forward to reversing. The last mode we'll look at is shot. So to do that, let's click over to this drums part and now we'll set the mode to shot. And now every slice of this particular loop is now a one shot for me to play back. This can be useful if you have a drum part that has a kick and a snare and hi-hats and other elements that um, you can trigger as one shots to create your own drum part completely separate from the original groove of that particular loop. But in this case, let's go ahead and use this as a way to add a particular sample to my mix. And so as I'm adding other samples in here, I can now take that one shot, which is located here, and then let's go ahead and add some effects to it. And we'll turn on the reverb, and we'll apply some reverb to it. We'll adjust the uh, timing of the reverb, and then add some damping to it, some high cut. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the delay, and we'll also add some delay. Let's find a good uh, time on that, feedback amount. I'm just gonna use the trim to adjust that and then we'll also damp that a little bit. And then let's also change the pitch of that particular sample. Okay, great. So now back over my mixer, that loop is now a one shot with all those effects that I've applied. So if I'm playing other parts, I can play that sample now, and trigger it whenever I want. On the right side of the groups and samples, you'll notice a MIDI icon next to each sample name. You can drag that straight to your DAW to edit if that's the way you prefer. So let's go to Keys Melody, and we'll click on that and then drag that MIDI file straight to my DAW. And now I can play back this loop using this MIDI file. And if you're the type of person who likes to use a MIDI editor, uh, this is a great way to do that for any loop in Momentum. So we'll go ahead and just do a quick little edit here and see uh, what kind of part we can come up with here. Let's just loop that over. Let's see what we have here. And then of course you can add slice effects to it at that point as well. Now, if you've been editing a kit uh, to a place where you really want to be able to recall the settings you have, again, at a later time, you can click the save disk icon here and we'll go save as, and we'll create our own custom patch here. So uh, this can be my new patch and we'll save that. And now in my files under the custom tab, you'll find my new custom 
whichever one it was, my new patch located here that you can reload and load at a different time. So at this point, now that we're back over in the browser, let's look at the details of what you can do in the store and in the My File section. In the store, you can browse through any number of different titles. As I mentioned before, there's everything from hip hop to funk, guitars, horns, country. And then when you find a product that you are interested in, you could check out the demo just by clicking on the front of the cover. Or you can go into the product itself and listen to specific demos in the product. Then in the search bar, you can look for anything in our store. Say you're looking for products that are focused on guitar. So we're going to search for guitar and then everything that comes up will have guitars related to it. So here you can see products all that are based on guitars. Now you can purchase momentum formatted products directly here from the plugin or on our website, bigfishaudio.com. And then once it's purchased, you'll find the product is now in your My Files section. Now the My Files section, like I mentioned, is very similar in the layout to the store. There's a few differences. So if you click on a product, you can now see the kits and the samples that are included in that product. When you first load up a product, you'll see all these download icons next to each kit. You also have a download all. So if you want to download one or more uh, kits from here, you can just begin the downloads here, or you can click download all to get everything into uh, your computer. The search results will also be a little bit different. So if I go ahead and search for drums uh, in the search bar here, I'll now have results for products, kits, and samples. Now you can see every product in my account that has drums available in them. You can also see kits that have drums in them or samples. Now, when you see this arrow, this is gonna go ahead and take you directly to the product that it's from. So if you click on the demo, you like that particular sound, you can go see the product it's from. And then from there, you can load in either the kit or that sample. So adding this sample to a kit I already have loaded is the same as adding a sample from my computer. I can just drag it into the current kit that I have and build my own custom kit. And lastly, when an update is available for the software, you'll see a notification right here over the account button in Momentum. Well, I wanna thank you for sticking around and checking out this video. I hope you learned a lot and got to see how Momentum can really help you in your production workflow. Thanks and have a great day.